Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, I've had the Royal Enfield uh, Interceptor 650 for a couple of weeks. Uh, it's bog uh, stock at the moment, but there are a few things that you absolutely have to do with this bike, I think, as soon as you get it to do some improvements. There's a few little things that I want to do here in the garage. So uh, stick around, stay tuned for essential mods on the Interceptor 650. Okay, so what are these essential modifications that you have to do to the Interceptor then? Well, of course, it's up to you, but there are a few things on the bike that uh, are completely free of charge that I think are worth changing. First off, on the back here, uh, it comes with this hideous sort of plastic mudguard extension. I'm sure it's very effective at keeping some crud and stuff off you if you're riding in terrible weather, but for me, it just looks horrible, so that's got to go, and that looks like it's just unscrew and off it comes, so that's coming off. Next thing is, uh, well, this isn't free, but you've got the massive number plate on here that we get on UK bikes. I'm going to replace that for something a little bit smaller. Now, if we come down... Uh, at the front here, uh, the front mud guard, similar to the back, you've got this big old plastic thing here. That's going to uh, that's going to come off as well, just unscrews by the look of it. There were reflectors on the um, forks. I've ripped them off, as you can see. It's left some sticky goo. I just need to get some white spirit or something and get that off. And then the last mod, which is the most major one, which will cost some money, is I want to replace these um, end cans uh, for some cans that I got from Tech Bike Parts. Let me show you those now. Right, so the silencers I've got to put on the uh, on the bike are these. Uh, they're end cans. These are called uh, Canon silencers. They're from Tech Bike Parts, uh, TEC. There we go. Uh, they're really nicely made, um, sort of uh, some sort of st brushed stainless steel type finish. I think they look great, and they should sound really, really good. And again, they're just a simple bolt on. I hope we'll find out. I'm not known for my technical prowess, but they're going to go on. Um, we'll see what they sound like. They cost uh, 300 quid from Tech Bike Parts, but uh, if they do what I think they're going to do, then I think not only am I going to get better sound but I'm also going to get a good weight saving, so we'll check that out. All right, without further ado, let's crack on. Right, first thing, let's deal with this hideous number plate. This is a bog standard size uh, UK number plate, which is just awful to look at. Um, it's, uh, this is the legal requirement to have them this big, so uh, what I'm about to do is technically illegal, so be careful if you're going to do this. Don't go for a number plate that's really, really small and can't be seen by anyone, because then you might get into trouble with the police. But I always go for something slightly smaller. This is the one I've gone for. It's a 5 by 7 so it's uh, that much smaller and should just look that much neater and doesn't draw attention to you because it's not hideously small. Uh, I get these, people ask me whereabouts do I get my number plates. I buy these from a company called fancyplates.com on the web. Uh, I've got no affiliation with them and they're about uh, 20 quid and you get them made within the day. So uh, I'm going to pop that on there. So I'm just going to whip that off there, drill some holes, stick it on and while I'm at it, remove this plastic bit as well. Right, I've got all the bolts out of that plastic bit, and but if you, I don't know if you can see in there, but it's just held on now, underneath by the fact that the uh, cable for the stoplight uh, runs through a hole in there. So I'm never going to use this bit of plastic again. So I'm just going to uh, hack that bit off there, just dremel through it or something, uh, and then just remove it that way. Bingo. Right, I'm just going to put the uh, bolts back in there because it holds the number plate or the, sorry, the uh, what bit of mud guard I've got left back onto the lighting cluster. So I'll stick those back in to neaten that up, but it already looks much better, I think. Right, next marker up for the number plate. Right, I've marked up on the back of the number plate whereabouts the brackets were, but I just want to measure it and then I'll just scrape a little mark on to make sure they're absolutely accurate each side. Right, and then because it's plastic and the uh, drill can slip around, I'm going to do a little uh, pilot hole first as usual. Perfect. Go fit it. Right, I'll just bolt the plate on then. When you buy the plates, they come with, uh, you can, or you can buy them with a fitting kit, uh, which is either black or little uh, yellow plastic screws. Uh, because my holes are in the yellow part, obviously I'm going to use the yellow screws. Uh, and then also they provide you with some sticky tape, so I'm just going to put a bit of tape on the bottom bit just to keep it held down against the bracket there. Right, let's get a bolt it on. 
Perfect. Right, so that's the new small number plate on and that bit of hideous plastic taken off. I think that looks uh, so much better already. I'll just quickly see the front mud guard, then we'll get onto the end cans. It's a right fiddle to get at this one. And just get the pliers on the nut. There we go. So be careful you don't chew up the uh, screw or you'll never get it off. There we go, one more. Bingo. And again, front of my guard already looking better. I'll just pop the screws back in, I think. Actually, that's, uh, that's plastic, so there's no danger of rust. Uh, I think I'll put them back in just to tidy it up, but uh, otherwise that's looking much better too. Right, before I crack on to the main event, which is the end cans, which I'm really hoping is going to make a big difference to this bike. Uh, the next little job I want to do, as I mentioned, I left some sticky glue on the front fork. It had these um, reflectors on here. I think they're some sort of probably Euro 4 or maybe a US rule or something. I pulled them off. The other side came off nice and cleanly. This one made a bit of a gooey mess. I'm just going to get some white spirit on an old rag uh, and give that a wipe and try and get that gooey mess off. White spirit not helping too much. I'll try... Uh... I'll try a bit of heat, see if that works. Right, heat gun time. I've got to be a bit careful here because clearly I don't want to damage the paintwork by applying too much heat. So I'm just going to warm it up to melt the glue and then see if I can peel it off. All right, let's try the petrol trip. Okay. White spirit didn't work, let's try some petrol. Trouble is with this, you can sometimes melt your rubber gloves. Give it a good soaking. Got some of it, but it's still a right old mess. Bit of Elgro grease together with the petrol seems to be the way to get that off. Right, got the goo off the fork. Uh, just give it a quick polish now, and that'll bring the paint back up to uh, where it should be. Perfect. Nice. Right, let's get the exhaust done. Right then, to these uh, exhausts. They look really well made, um, and they fill fills a couple of, about a couple of kilograms. I don't know, but I've got a feeling they're going to be way lighter than the big beasts that are already on here. Obviously, there are two exhausts, twin cylinder bike, exhaust either side, old school stuff. Uh, looks like there's like three or four bolts maybe to take off, so I'll undo those. Pop that on, it's a straightforward slip on, tighten on job. Uh, and we'll see, uh, one, what the weight difference is and also what they sound like. Right. Yeah. All right, so I've got the uh, old can off and I can tell you just subjectively, this old one weighs about twice what the new one does. So pretty good weight saving. Have that. that feels about four kilograms and that's about two, something like that. So. Uh, Good weight saving, right, let's uh, bolt this one back on then. Right, looks pretty straightforward to go back on. Literally, just the two bolts. One on this little collar here to tighten her up and one to uh, hang it back on there again using the same bolts that came with it, so piece of cake. He says, let's give it a try. Nice. Right, that's gone on there quite nicely. It looks a, a lot less bulky than the other one, so I like the looks of it. The only slight downside is just here, where the pipe joins, you've got a bit of a weld and a little bracket that kept the little cover on the original pipe. So I need to have a little think about that. I might get some uh, pipe tape and just wrap around there just to neaten that bit up, but uh, I can live with that for now. I'll do the other side and then we'll see what she sounds like. Right, so there we are then. That's the, uh, the other pipe on. So one thing remains, let's get it started up and see what she sounds like. Let's uh, just pop you down over here. We can say that's a little bit more fruity. Splendid. So I need to ride it, see what she sounds like when it's riding, but it sounds absolutely great. At the end of the video, if you just stay till the very end, I'll do a before and after little sound check just so you can hear what that sounds like. But uh, there we are. So some initial tidy ups on the bike. 
I've got some other things I want to do, but just to summarise what I've done there, it's a slightly smaller number plate and taken off the plastic monstrosity it was on here. I think this rear end still needs some tidying up, so I'm going to see what I can do with that. Uh, I've got the Tech Bike Parts uh, Canon silencers on. Silencer being the wrong name, of course, because it's made them louder. It's also saved at least four kilograms of weight. Uh, really pleased with those, but I do need to put a little bit of uh, exhaust tape just around there to neaten up this join, which uh, looks a bit naff. As I say, tech bike parts, I'll put a link below, 300 quid if you want a set of those. I think it's money well spent because they look and sound amazing. And at the front end, uh, again, I've just tidied up the, uh, the mud guard there as well, taken off the uh, plastic bit that was on there. It's going to spray up more dirt on it, but uh, I'm thinking maybe a bash plate on here just to protect underneath. Um, and then the other thing I did was take off the reflectors, uh, just a bit of petrol. Uh, just got the sticky gear off and uh, she's looking nice and tidy I think uh, so yeah she's almost there oh one other thing I did do I didn't show you on the video I just put some black tape around here just around the tank this is just normal masking tape all the way around just to blend in the seam on the uh, with, uh, with the fuel tank just into the black frame a little bit I just think it makes it look uh, a lot neater I think this colour scheme looks absolutely fab on the infield Alrighty, that's it for this time then. Stick around uh, till the very end of the video to hear the, uh, the you know, the sound comparison. Uh, but that's it for now. You're going to be seeing a lot more on this bike if you stay tuned. Okay, that's it. Uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio. <laughs>